friends, it's Emily with Miss Anita's Crafts, and today I'm going to be doing a type of craft that I haven't done in a while. I'm going to be doing something with mosaics, so I'll talk about all the stuff that I have here. Um, this is the last little mosaic project that I did. So it's on a wooden birdhouse, and um, I'm actually going to be putting the tiles on today on the jar that I'm going to be using the same way that I did on the birdhouse, but this one was real cute. It's actually pretty heavy since it's got the grout in there, and I'll explain what I'm going to use for that as well. Um, and so it's just doing some kind of a pattern here, you know, maybe doing stripes of the different shapes and the different uh, little uh, tiles that I have. So I've got a whole bunch of these. So there's, I think, three or four different shapes. There's triangles, there's rectangles, there's squares, and there's diamonds. So yeah, I'll do some sort of variety of all those different ones. And I'm not going to care what the colors look like. There's some really cool colors if I wanted to kind of pick out the blues or whatever all the reds and yellows I'm not going to worry about that I'm just going to do whatever colors I grab I'll just do sort of a random assortment just like what's on this and I'm going to be putting them onto a jar so if you have any jars that maybe have some little sticky spots on there that are hard to clean off if you've been having a hard time getting the glue off there uh, with something like this, that's okay because you're going to cover it up anyways and the whole thing's going to have the mosaic design and then the grout in between and so you won't really see any areas where there might be a little bit of glue like what you see right here and also actually on the areas where there's a little bit of glue that might even help the, um, the hot glue and the glass to adhere a little bit better to the jar. So that's even a little bit helpful for you. So this is the jar we're going to be using, just a little small one. If you were using something that maybe had a lot of clear glass tiles then it could turn into almost like a little luminary when you're done you could put some lights in it this one's not really going to work that way but it is going to look cool with all the colors on there Grout. there's a lot of different products you can use for that but i'm actually just going to be using a really simple tool here it's just the plaster parrots and you do um two parts of this one part water cold water i have something to mix in it gets kind of powdery and gets in the air a little bit so you want to be careful when you go and scoop it that you don't make a big mess of it because it'll be in the air and probably get on everything but I have a bucket to mix in I have something to mix with so just something that if it gets messy I'm just going to toss it it's just a popsicle stick or this could be your official mixing stick and you can save it for the next plaster project that you do and then I have a measuring cup so I'll be able to measure two parts of the plaster one part water with that and mix in the whole little container and so it's good to have little mixing cups or something near by that you can use for things like that all right i also have my glue gun plugged in and ready it's sitting over here on a little mat so it doesn't get glue on everything and because i'm going to be going through a lot of glue i've got all my backup glue sticks because i'm going to need to reach for those quite often because i'll be running out of glue as i glue them in place so before we do anything with the plaster that will come last and um, we're just going to be gluing our tiles wherever we want them so actually some of them are kind of clear so that's neat i might be able to do something with lights later on but we'll see uh so i'm just going to probably start at the top here and work my way down do them in rows and i'm going to space them apart with some sort of even placement like this is so as you can see it's got the same a, a little sort of like margins all around so whatever however much that is of a space whatever you choose to do um, with that little border uh, of space around it you're going to try to keep that as consistent as possible everywhere so that way you know you, you're having those equal spacings and when you go to put your plaster on it it will fill in those gaps and it won't look weird so when you're laying them out you know sort of try to glue them with you know a little little tiny bit of space maybe an eighth of an inch or so in between them as you lay them out so that way you have a nice little area for your plaster to fill in okay so i'm just going to start with probably the squares and then just go around putting them evenly spaced all around this top edge here All right, so I just have my first row on there, and I try to do them as evenly spaced out as possible and try to do them in a nice straight row. So for the next one, it would be kind of cool to do all one type of shape, all squares, but I think I'm going to do triangles for the next one. So on the triangles, I'm going to have to do one up, one down. So, you know, just you could maybe lay them out if you needed to to see what they're going to look like. If you want to go and pick out all of the triangles to have them separated, you could do that. Um, this is a pack of, um, I forgot how many pieces you get, but I think it's about a thousand pieces and I got them on Amazon so I can include the link 
to that where I got these um, in the description of the video in case you wanted to buy the same one because from what I found this is the best deal so you get a, a whole bunch of tiles all nice bright colors and you don't have to pay a whole lot because sometimes you'll find that a small small pack of these um, if you go to Joann's or Michael's um, just a small little pack um, of mosaic tiles can cost you a ton of money so sometimes I've even seen them priced by the piece so you might get 30 pieces for ten dollars or something wild like that so to be able to get a multi-pack and something that's got all these different shapes is a pretty good deal so always try to buy something like that if you can get them in bulk if you can get a bigger pack you save a little money so that it's way. ready now for the plaster so i'm going to set that aside and i do have um, gloves on because i'm going to use my hands it's going to get real messy so right now in the bucket i have almost two cups of plaster and then i went and got almost a cup of water just from the tap that I'm gonna sort of mix in slowly and it is ready to stir. Now this stuff will start to harden fairly quickly. So this isn't something that you wanna mix and then walk away from and come back later and then apply it. You wanna apply it right away, which is why I have the gloves on, my sleeves rolled up and I'm ready to go. Because as soon as I can, I wanna be able to get my hands in there kind of finish off the mixing so that way you know i know that the popsicle stick is going to get most of it mixed so that way i don't have powder flying everywhere but then i need to sort of get in there and knead it a little bit with my hands almost like you're you know making dough um so i need to be able to do that so i can get some on my hand and then i'll just sort of start to smear it in all of these little areas um and then i also know that because my little surface area is going to get plaster all over it i might want to put down some wax paper or something just to protect that area so we will get our plaster mixed and then quickly quickly get started to kind of gently because you don't want to knock these pieces off either you want to be able to gently sort of go around in circles and just smear it into all the little cracks and try to avoid the lip of this and the very bottom because the very bottom you want it to be able to sit flat you don't want any bumps or any rocking when it sits down um, so keep that area clean and then maybe on the top we could do something with wire or beads later on if we feel like it so we don't want to get any messy plaster on the top if we can help it. Okay, so now what I like to do is I will put in the recommended amount of water and then see how I feel about the consistency of it. So it goes from sort of a white color to almost a gray or tan color. Uh, but then once you once you kind of added that in, and I know once it dries, you know it will dry with more of a powdery white look, like what you saw on the um, little birdhouse that I showed. So it, you know, it starts off kind of brown, and when it dries, it gets a little little bit lighter. So I try to see how do I do I like the way it feels? Does this feel like something I can work with? Is it going to be runny? Is it going to drip off what I'm doing? And since whatever your project is that you're doing with plaster, it may require a little more thickness, a little little um, thicker consistency than other projects. Um, if this was a stepping stone and I was just going to be pouring the liquid in and letting it dry, this might be fine and this might be okay. But since I need to be able to mold it a little bit and get it to fit into all those little areas in between the tiles, I need it to be a little thicker. So it's okay to add a little more plaster and see what kind of uh, consistency you need to achieve. So I'm just gonna start to slowly add a little more and a little more, keep it moving so it doesn't dry out or get too clumpy because we need it to be smooth also. And then once I feel that it is moldable, almost like a paste, then I will know it's a okay consistency to get started putting it in between the tiles. It's getting there. I feel like I wanna add a little more of the powder before I get started on this. Okay, so I just go in with my hands, get a scoop of it on my glove, and I just sort of start to gently smear it all around and it's thick enough it's formed like almost like a thick pancake batter it's not runny it's not drippy it's just enough where it can go into all those cracks and be able to move around easily it's nice and smooth i made sure that when i was stirring i got into all those little corners you know this little kind of get into the edges here to make sure i don't have any powder or anything that is hiding in there because i don't want this to come out clumpy and if you have any powder it's going to have some clumps so i know that i'm covering over all these tiles and um, you can't really see them anymore but that's okay because as long as we kind of scrape off the extra later on with our fingers and all the cracks are filled in we'll be able to clean them up really easily it does clean up nice with a sponge so i use a gloved hand because i haven't found any better way to do this besides just going at it with your fingers and your gloves 
and just getting in all those cracks where you can feel what you're doing and you're able to just get into the small areas because if you are doing this with a popsicle stick or spatula or a paintbrush or something else some other type of tool you just wouldn't be able to feel exactly what you need to feel to know that you're getting in those little areas so being able to feel it with your bare hands or with a glove if you don't want to get the stuff under your nails which is fine and understandable and you see I'm just kind of carefully going around the edge here because I don't want that showing too far up the jar probably just about right there and no more okay I might even go change my gloves but what I kind of do is with my um well, let me just scrape this off into the bucket I don't have all this extra heavy stuff all right so with my with my glove and my fingers kind of stretched like an L like this I'm just going to sort of gently scrape along to get all the extra off of there okay do it gently so you don't pull anything off or get snagged onto your glove okay scrape that back into the bucket do this all around all right and then once this whole thing is dry oh, there's a string of hot glue once this whole thing is dry you'll be able to um come in with a sponge and just kind of wipe all that off of the of the tiles if you try to do it now since the whole thing is wet you're not going to have much success because you're going to find that um you know you're just pulling up more and more wet plaster and covering over your tiles again so oh, see knock one off but just get off as much as you can so that you just kind of can see the tile just uncover it a little bit all right and this stuff dries quick so it'll be dry today but we do kind of need to let it just sit for a second. We can't speed it along or do anything to help that process. We just sort of have to let it be and then come back and check on it. And we can do a little tap, tap, tap test on it to see how it's doing. And set it on something that you don't care about getting plaster on. So that's why I have this wax paper down. Okay. And we did mix a little too much. So I still have some left over. Well, this is still a little uh, pliable. So I would be able to use this in something. If you had a mold ready to go, you could pour this into a mold so you don't waste it. But if you have to, you know, it's not much you can do with plaster once it's hardened. So it uh, just kind of has to go get tossed in the trash once it dries. And I think that's the best way to do it is just let it, you can kind of empty out some of it and then let the rest of it just harden on there. And then you can just kind of tap it onto the trash can and bang all that dried stuff out of there once it dries on there. Uh, it'll just kind of crumble into the trash. So that's a nice, easy way to clean it up. So there you have it. I cleaned it all up and kind of with my fingernails had to pick some of the plaster off of there, but it's better to do before it fully hardens on there because then it does get to be a little hard to pick off once it's kind of crusty you might need to file it off or use some sandpaper which you could always go and do if you don't like these little lumpy areas where maybe it got a little bit raised or a little textured you could sand that off once it's totally dry I wouldn't recommend doing it while it's still a little sticky while it's still a little tacky which this is um and I wanted to show a couple products because these are some you know they make products specifically for mosaics so you could use you know you could use this to glue your stuff down you could use this as your ground out. Um, you really don't have to use any of the specifically mosaic tools. I like using something that's a little more versatile, something that I could see myself using again for some other now, projects. There's nothing wrong with using these tools and I think it's perfectly fine. Um, the only thing about it is a little expensive for something that doesn't have to be specifically mosaic. I know it's nice to have that brand name on there, but it's totally fine to use something else like the Plaster of Paris, which is more versatile anyways and a whole lot cheaper. Um, but also the fact that the plaster comes in a powder that you can mix as you go, but this stuff is a liquid that's already mixed. And so it does have the potential to, once you've broken the seal, it does have the potential to dry out before you could ever use all of it. So that's the thing that I don't like about these products is it's pre-mixed. So, you know, yes, you know, you have the right consistency and it's ready to go. But unless you're going to be using all of it, chances are even with it sealed up really well, it's still going to dry out and then you're going to have wasted products. So I'd rather have something that I can mix as I go. And for something like this, I want to guess that this is what a four pound bucket I think this is about $15. And so if you buy it with a coupon, you know, go to your Joann's, Michael's, get your coupons. Um, I know for sure it's less than 20. And then it goes a long way because you're also going to add water to it. So, you know, something like this 
you can, you know, it's going to dry fast. You know, you're going to be able to alter the consistency, which is something you can't do with a product like this because it's pre-mixed. So you can, you know, adjust if you need this to be a little more liquid so it will last longer before it dries. Or if you want it to be thicker, you can add more like we did today. Um, so it just has some more options. And I think this is just a more versatile tool that you could use with other projects as well, not specifically mosaics. And one final thing, because I'm really crazy about these fairy lights, I just wanted to see what it would look like because these pieces kind of remind me a lot of a Tiffany lamp. And I still have a little bit of plaster since it's wet, kind of popping up here and there. But I wanted to throw in some fairy lights and see what it looks like, see if this could be used as a little luminary. So let's just turn these on, stick them inside. And actually, a lot of them are pretty translucent. Kind of does show through most of them. I think some of them, like this dark, dark red one here, or some of these browns or purples or whatever that color is, maybe not so much. But a lot of them, yeah, because look, if I pop it out, yep, we see a shadow from a lot of them. So a lot of the oranges, blues, greens, yeah, pretty transparent. That's nice. So we could use it for a luminary or we could use it for just a decorative piece. It could be like a flower vase or whatever you want to do with it because all the decoration is on the outside. So you still have the glass on the inside, but that is way cool. I love that.